In this video, we are going to discuss about spatial data. Okay. So, uh, you say all data, whether that be primary data or secondary data, they have got three modes or dimensions. So, these modes are temporal, thematic and spatial. So, these are also called as dimensions. Okay. So, all data has got three modes or dimensions. They are temporal, thematic and spatial. So, temporal uh, mode or temporal dimension actually de describes or defines when a data is taken. So, this is actually, this usually comes as a time stamp. Okay, like uh, 12, 00, 00 uh, September 2022 or something like this. Okay, so this shows when the data is taken. Now, thematic actually represents on what is this data taken or on what or what is this data referring to. And spatial, sorry, spatial is uh, T-I-A-L, okay. So, spatial is actually representing the values, the values, characters or symbols, symbols that convey to the user, to the user about the location of a feature. So that is the spatial dimension of this. That is, it actually shows where exactly does a thing uh, or an object or a feature is lying on. It it is uh, it gives the location of the object, location of the uh, feature. So that is the spatial dimension of uh, the uh, data called. So a map, actually a map is a very important. Thing, or it is actually a very important source of da spatial data or data about a geographic location, geographic place. Okay, so a map. There are different types of maps. Mainly three type of maps are there. Okay, the first one you can call it as a sketch map. So this is a very simple map, or like uh, it, this is something that you see on these wedding invitations or something that just show you a brief description about where exactly is the groom's house or bride's houses. So this is a uh, really you can say if this is the NH14, and here you have uh, a junction, and here is it. So this is called a sketch map. It does not have much of a, like a clarity or something like that, but just show you something they show you the basic thing that you need to know you cannot really expect a lot of uh, important things here and a lot of precise it is not precise it's just just uh, giving you uh, a general idea about what you are to do what you have to say then there is topographic maps so topographic maps it is actually describes a topography it shows you an area and it shows almost everything in that area the roads there uh, then the rivers there uh, or there is the uh, railway crosses there all these things are shown in this uh, topographic map okay so that is the topographic map and then you have the thematic map so thematic maps are actually based on a particular theme say something like rainfall or something like roadways or waterways so you can see that all these things they are actually based on a particular theme so that is called the thematic map okay uh, it only shows a part of this uh, topographic map. It selects a part of the topographic maps and projects it. Say, if, if you want to see all the uh, roadways in it, it will be showing like this. So, that is the thematic map. Okay. So, you have three types of maps. They are sketch map, topographic map and thematic map. And then, you have mapping. So, mapping is actually is the process of generating maps is called mapping. So, mapping has got uh, a few steps uh, to 
portray or to uh, describe something or an area or something in a map you have to follow a certain steps okay the first step is actually establishing the purpose establishing the purpose so every map has got a particular purpose to do so you have to establish the purpose second you have to define the scale of the map okay then you have to uh, get or, or fix a method of representation method of representation then you have to generalize the features then you have to get a projection then referencing and lastly annotate okay so we will be discussing about all these things in detail so the first thing is establishing purpose so you, as i have told you before every map has got a particular purpose to do okay so uh, that is we, using map what we are doing is that uh, we are converting the data or the spatial data or geographic data to information that can be converted to a third party so you are actually converting data to information so that it can be converted to a third party available there. okay so based on how you present this information there can be mainly two types of maps okay the first one is called a propaganda map propaganda maps and you can have topographic maps okay to these propaganda maps are actually an excellent example for showing how you can use this data to or to convey a message to a community or to people or to third party so this propaganda maps are usually based on a particular propaganda an example of a propaganda map is that uh, during the um, uh, during actually the cold war uh, situation uh, there were actually they they wanted to they, there was this allies and germany and all these things or russia and all so what it did uh, was uh, the ussr to show that uh, show that uh, to boost the confidence of the allies they developed uh, the european nations actually developed a propaganda map and this propaganda map actually showed uh, or, or exaggerated uh, the the areas captured from the ussr okay so that is a propaganda map it is based on a particular propaganda so this propaganda maps they need not be true they they need not be correct or accurate they can be distorted the data can be distorted the informations can be distorted the map can be wrong but they are based on a particular propaganda their main aim is to show that propaganda to convey that propaganda next we have the topographic maps so what does this topographic maps are doing is that they are actually a more like a uh, like a, a particular they are they are actually true maps okay so they are actually developed by mapping agencies maybe national mapping agencies or anything so these topographic maps are can be used by a lot of purposes used for a lot of purposes like railway development or uh, building new road road base or waterways or anything like that so these topographic maps are actually uh, kind of accurate maps they show more accurate representation and everything so we should always have a purpose in mind before we start or we we do the mapping we should know what is this map is all about what is the purpose of making such a map okay so for example we have k rail right so when we build the k rail or when we show all this alignment of k rail we should have this have this purpose in mind okay we have to show the alignment of k rail and then we have to proceed to the process of making maps okay so that is establishing purpose and second one is define scale so what is a scale you can see that in map or actually map is what map is actually a short scale or a smaller view of uh, an area right so what is scale doing is that it is actually determining how small the map should be or how small the features of map should be that is called as the scaling okay there are actually three types of scaling they are called ratio scaling 
then verbal scaling and then there is graphic graphical scaling okay so what is a scaling doing is that or what is a scale is actually uh, it is the ratio of the uh, the distance on map distance on map to the distance on ground the distance of ground so that is the scale in ratio scale we are depicting this as a ratio that is for example 1 is to 50 in this we are saying that 1 centimeter uh, in uh, the map is actually equivalent to 50 centimeters or say 5000 5, 5, so means that it is actually equivalent to this that is what we show in uh, verbal scaling uh, uh, sorry in ratio scaling but in verbal scaling what we are saying is, is something like this 1 centimeters as 50 kilometers or something like that okay in this so this is the verbal scaling what we do in graphical scaling is we we draw something like this so if you have seen google maps or something you must have seen this so this is something like 0 100 and 200 so this is doing the same thing here you this is showing 1 centimeter so here we are saying 1 centimeter is equal to 100 kilometers okay so as you move forward this will go like this 1 10 20 30 this is means 1 centimeter is equal to 10 kilometers okay so this is actually once you zoom in once you zoom in this will happen okay so graphical scaling is showing this as a graph image okay so graphical scaling is mostly used when there is there needs a quick difference or you have to change the scaling immediately okay that is when what you use uh, graphical scaling is used okay this is very useful for when you instantly change the scale of a map example is google map zoom okay so that is the scale that is uh, first thing what you have to do is you have to establish the purpose then you have defined the scale once you do this uh, you have to go for the third step that is you have to define a method of representation so method of representation is that you have to represent an entity a real world entity in a map so there there is mainly three important symbols in a the map they are point line and area okay so using this uh, method of representation what you are doing is you are actually showing images in 3d space to a 2d space that is what you are doing so actually we know that the whole area is in three dimension right now you are shifting that three dimensional representation to a two dimensional representation and you are actually showing the entities using these symbols okay and the symbols used actually is depends on the scaling depends on the scale okay uh, what symbols are used it actually depends on the scale of representation uh, for example uh, you say if you are looking for the national map of india so if this is india and you are looking for a particular city for example tiruvandaburam so this tiruvandaburam will be shown as a what as a point now if you check the map of kerala this is the map of kerala tiruvandavaram will be shown as a city right as shown as a state right that is an area right so earlier it was shown as a point now it is shown as an area right so that is uh, what i said uh, like uh, the uh, representation of objects actually depend on the scale of the uh, map okay so then you have so that is what we are doing first what we are do, what we did was we established a purpose then we defined a scale then we defined a method of representation now the next step is actually we have to generalize we have to generalize so what is generalization so you see all maps are actually a generalized or sim or simplified view of a real world features okay it is actually a generalized look of the real world features that you see okay uh, so you have to generalize it that is you have to kind of you should not show everything that you see in uh, in the real world in a map you have to somehow simplify it and and generalize it when you show that in a map so that is called as generalization there is actually certain needs for generalization so let's see what are the needs for generalization 
so the first thing is that the data is required in a particular scale we have to take data in a particular scale we have to scale the data for example if you're showing a big scale data and you're showing a roadway you will not show every curve in the roadway will you no you will just show it as a straight line okay so that is data uh, we have to show data in a particular scale then there is limitations of technology you cannot really uh, 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 use technologies to show every single detail in a map okay so there are limitations in the technology then you have to improve the clarity so if you show every single thing in the map like if you denote every single tree that is present in the real world in a map then it will be very difficult for the person to identify or understand the map for that we have to use we have to uh, use a tech, uh, use generalization so that we can improve the clarity of the map okay so next is that uh, uh, next is that uh, so uh, there is actually as i told you there is actually a relation between data and scaling so this is called as this is called as scale related generalization scale related generalization so that is called a scale related generalization so these are the needs for generalization first thing is that we have to get data in a particular scale then we have limitations of technology then we have to improve the clarity okay now how we are actually generalizing image okay there is actually a process of generalization there is a process of generalization so the steps are the first one is selection selection that is you have to select the entities that are required to generalize that you want to generalize or you want to show then you have to simplify it simplify it and then you have to give some displacement so that is when you look at a map sometimes you can see that for example if this is a multi storied building okay say this is a multi storied building and the first floor is say it is a, an electric shop and on the top floor you have got a uh, 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 a supermarket so when you depict this in in a map you will be showing this as a separate two points that is slightly there there is a space in between but in real life maybe they they are actually on top of one another but you are displacing them so that and introducing a shape introducing a space in between them this is called a displacement then you have to smooth it so smooth that uh, means that you should not show every single detail in it if that is a curved thing you have to slightly smooth it okay so that is called a smoothing okay so this is actually the process of uh, generalization what is it first you have to select the entities then you have to simplify the entities then you have to displace the entities and then you have to smooth the entities next step is called projection okay next is called projection so what were the uh, steps that we have discussed until now first one is establishing a purpose of the map then defining a scale then define a method of representation then generalize it now you have to project it projection so what is projection projection is the way of showing um, uh, a space in 3d to two dimension okay so that this is similar to like uh, for example if you depict the earth as an inflated ball or as a balloon or something a ball or football or something like that now you have to show that in two dimension right so how will you uh, show a ball in two dimension either you can cut the balloon okay if this is the balloon you cut it in half and then you try to uh, make it flat now what will happen it will go for discontinuous it will create discontinuity okay this can create discontinuity and this is not desirable see if you say if you cut the balloon and you show it in a map as in a flat image now you see you can see that uh, sometimes india will not lie next to pakistan it will it will be away from india so there is a problem of discontinuity occurring there so you cannot simply simply just cut the ball and then cut the globe and show that in a plane no we cannot do that for that we have got projection technique 
the types of projections there are mainly three types of projection the first one is cylindrical projection cylindrical projection then you have got rectangular projection rectangular projection then you have conical projection so in cylindrical projection what you are doing is that you let's imagine a cylindrical room okay a cylindrical room and then there you have a globe inside it say a globe inside it now suppose you are actually putting a bulb inside the globe and lighting the bulb you are lighting the bulb and then what will happen there will be an image that will be displayed on the wall right so that image will be like this right if you if you open the room and you show that the image will be like this so this is called as cylindrical projection there is a problem there are certain problems that occur during uh, cylindrical projection the first thing is that see near equator all these images will have all all this uh, the the scale will be correct in the equator the equator but as you move farther from the equator near the uh, poles and all the image can be distorted or the scale can be distorted however the total area is actually preserved okay so what will happen the equator the projection will be correct but as we move farther from the equator this uh, scale get distorted however the area of projection is actually preserved okay next one is rectangular projection it is similar to this instead uh, instead of using a cylindrical room you are actually using a cubical room that is the only difference you are using a cubical room and you are showing this so then there will be an image that will be shown in a, in, in one side of the wall right so that image will be something like this so that image will be something like this that image will be like this okay this will be the image that will be formed there is certain problems to cylinder uh, to rectangular projection as well like only a particular a particular side of the uh, the globe will be particular side can be shown this is a problem like if you bulb if you light the bulb here only this side can be shown right so a part of the side can be shown like it is mostly like half of the globe will be projected and the rest half will not be projected then there can be distortions at the edges at the edges however in most areas most areas the uh, scale is actually preserved scale is preserved scaling is preserved most of the areas okay however there are will be distortions at the edges apart from that the scaling is preserved in most of the areas next we have something called the conical projections let me just erase this okay then you have something called like conical projections here instead of a rectangular or cubical or cylindrical room we are actually using a conical room and inside that we have got the globe and we will be lighting the bulb here okay so we've got we are lighting the bulb here okay now what will happen you will get some uh, a map like this or get a projection like this like this get a projection this is this will be the equator and this will be the uh, latitudes okay and you have got the longitudes like this so here what happens is that the area will be distorted area is going to be distorted however the scale is actually preserved and as you move, move towards the downside da downwards as you move downwards uh, there will be uh, uh, distortions distortions in the distributions distortions in scaling okay but in most of the areas the scaling is preserved uh, however the area gets the dis uh, distorted area gets distorted so that is uh, what projection okay let me just drop this okay next so what you have what we have done until now first we established a purpose then we defined scale then we defined a method of representation then we generalized then we pro did projection okay next we have to do referencing we have to referencing what is referencing is actually referencing is actually locating a particular entity in a map 
say you have to locate your house in your in a map you must have done this multiple times okay you have to locate exactly where your house is okay this is called a referencing so referencing can be done in mainly in three ways first one is using geographic coordinates so this is done using latitudes and longitudes geographic coordinates this is done using latitudes and longitudes then you have got something like rectangular coordinates rectangular coordinates so in rectangular coordinates what you are actually using is that you are using something like a coordinate system or you are using grids for locating things so if this is the area you will be locating the object here okay so using that grid you are doing it then you have got another referential system called non coordinate system in non coordinate system you are not actually using any kind of coordinates but you are actually sometimes using verbal systems okay something like for example your postal address that is actually a referencing method right you are saying that okay my house is my house address is uh, this 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 at po okay now you are saying that okay this is my location you are not using any kind of coordinates you are not saying that okay my uh, coordinate is 57 degree uh, 47 minutes you are not saying that instead you are saying that okay this is my postal address so you can refer refer you or your address in that way as well then the final step is annotate so annotate what is annotate is that now you have shown everything you have made your map you have drawn the roadways everything and you have shown all the entities now we it, it won't make sense until you say that okay this is what this is the post office and this is what this is the petrol pump so you are as assigning labels to the uh, images or labels to the map that is called as what annotating okay this can be introduced using keys then you have used legends etc so that is called annotating so what are the steps in uh, mapping first you have to establish a purpose establish a purpose then you have to uh, define scale then you have to define a method of representation then you have to generalize the map then you have to introduce projections then you have to reference then you have 